Hey, welcome to my q and I'm calling this episode Old Camera Guy 101 because it is the 101st video I've uploaded to this channel and, at least here in the United States, introductory college courses are labeled or numbered 101. So I figured as an introduction to get to know a little bit more about me, I'd go ahead and host a Q&A. So I put out a call for your questions for me on Instagram and my YouTube community page and boy, you guys really delivered. And if you want to find out more about everybody who's asking these questions, I've got their Instagram links in the description down below. All right, it's time to dive right in. Our first question comes from TFF Hopper. Now you may know her as T Hopper here on YouTube. Her channel is not just gear talk. She goes a little deeper and gets into the philosophy of photography and you can tell that from her question. It's a two-parter. She starts, I'd like to hear your input on why do you find film relevant in these days? So I think that depends on your definition of relevant. The freedictionary.com defines relevant as meaningful or purposeful in current society or culture. Well, film is meaningful to me because it's how I capture my memories, which mean a lot to me. And it's purposeful because it's how I achieve the look I want to get in my photographs without having to spend hours on filters or Photoshop on a computer. And I think if something is still around, has stood the test of time, it's a survivor. And just the fact that it's survived lends it some degree of relevance. The fact that new products like Sinistel's E6 line of chemistry, Lomochrome Metropolis, Hamish Gill's Pixelator, all these new products are a pretty good indication of relevance too. The second part of the question is, where do you take inspiration from photographers or artists you find inspiring? For photographers, one of the first that comes to mind is Walker Evans. And as good as this biography looks on my bookshelf, I really got to get around to finish reading this. Now I like the fact that she included other artists in this question too. Fun fact, I'm a painter in addition to being a photographer. I work mainly in acrylics and mixed media and I've actually been painting longer than I pursued photography. I've definitely been inspired by the painter Edward Hopper. Nobody does solitude quite like Hopper, and solitude is a recurring theme in a lot of my photography. Next up, we have a question from Stephen Marmaroff, who is developing underscore monochrome on Instagram. And his question is, 127 film, yay or nay? Up to a week ago, I would have said nay, but I was digging through some of my stuff recently and found some super expired 127 film. So if I keep digging and find one of my old 127 cameras, I might just give it a go. Aim.shoot.develop, who has a channel here on YouTube, asks, what's your biggest camera regret? The one that got away. And that would be my Olympus 35 SP, which I sold for cheap in 2017, about a year before I started my channel. So I never got a chance to do a review video here on YouTube. Next question comes from Nick Taro Jr., who has a few books available through his Big Cartel website. And Nick asks, if you could time travel, where would you go so you could shoot an event or a location from the past? Rather than go with a specific event, I decided to go with the time and place. I would love to go back to the jazz clubs of New York in the 1950s. The Five Spot, the Half Note, Birdland, Village Vanguard, Bird, Dizzy, Miles, Monk, Coltrane. That whole scene I think would just be incredible. If you want to see the best of that kind of photography, check out the work of Herman Leonard. Next question comes from Jamie M. Photo, who many of you may know as Jamie Maldonado here on YouTube. I had the pleasure of participating in a roundtable discussion about film photography hosted by Jamie and T. Hopper, who I mentioned earlier, was on the panel too. So Jamie has a two-parter. Have you shot large format before? I have not, mainly because of cost. Go figure. Second question, what camera surprised you the most? That is the Sprocket Rocket from Lomography. It's just a plastic toy camera, but I love some of the stuff I've gotten with that camera. So I was very pleasantly surprised with the Sprocket Rocket. Let's grab a question from my community tab here on YouTube. Sam L. asks, have you ever used half-frame cameras much in your photography, and what do you think of them? Yes, I've got two cameras that can shoot half-frame. The Olympus Pen EES2, which I reviewed on the channel a while back, and the Diana Mini, which can shoot half-frame or square format. I wouldn't shoot half-frame every day, but I think it's great for travel when you don't want to pack a lot of film with you. You can squeeze 72 images onto a single roll of film. How cool is that? And as long as you don't blow up the prints too big, they actually look pretty decent. All right, I've got a question from Christine Pennick, who is Resger on Instagram, and she asks, which photographer from the past would you have loved to sit down and had a chat with? For me, it's Cartier-Bresson. He lived over 90 years, so I'm sure he'd have some amazing stories to tell. And then the selfish reason is, he could give me some pointers on my street photography too. Next up is Teddy Wanderer, who you can find here on YouTube as well as Instagram. And Teddy asks, when did you first use a film camera and what was it? So I grew up in the 1980s and the first camera I used was a 126 Instamatic camera. Fun fact, I was actually in the National Spelling Bee in 1983. President Reagan spoke to all the spellers in the Rose Garden and the very first picture I remember taking was a blurry image of the president 
37 years ago. Let's go back to my community page for a question from Morgan Titterington. And Morgan asks, what is your favorite film to work with? Well, if somebody else is buying, I'd have to say Fuji Acros 100. Whether it's the original flavor or Acros 2, that stock is beautiful. Pricey, but beautiful. All right, let's tackle another multi-part question. This is from Ian underscore CT, who is Ian Turpin, host of the Ordinary Photographer podcast. And Ian asked me about the best undiscovered gem or bargain of a camera on eBay. Because when you drive the price up, you can be a proper influencer. <laughs> Love it. All right, so bargain may be a relative term here, but the Nikon Light Touch AF or Nikon AF600 is a pretty nice camera, and it should be cheaper than a T2, a T4, or a Stylus Epic. Another one to look for is the Minolta Freedom Escort, which I reviewed here recently. Now, as far as film bargains, I haven't tried Ultrafine Extreme yet, but I have tried Kent Mirror 400. It's a pretty solid film, so I think it's worth checking out. And the next part of Ian's question, what does photography mean to you? Why do you do it? What do you get out of it, etc.? One of the things I get out of it is I get to see the world, experience new places, new things, and I get to share my vision with other people. Another thing I like is the documentation aspect of photography, because the only constant is change. That tree or person or building that you capture today may not be here tomorrow. So I look at photography as a way of preserving things for future generations to see. For me, photography is about the journey and the destination. I like seeing the final results and the road to get there. Every time I develop my own film, it is magic. Seeing those images in the tank gets me every time. Okay, now we have a question from Marcus over at the underscore M underscore photo on Instagram and the M Photography channel here on YouTube. Marcus is based in Zurich, Switzerland, and he also took part in Jamie Maldonado's roundtable discussion last month. Marcus asked, if you would do anything different in your photography journey, if you could start all over again, and what that would be? Well, number one would be take more pictures of my mom which should be everybody's number one. Take more pictures of your mom. She's not gonna be around forever. Number two would be start with SLRs sooner. I shot with the Lomo LCA zone focus camera exclusively from 1999 to 2009, and then my boss gave me an old Olympus OM2 SLR, and I had to learn a little bit about aperture and shutter speed, and I just wish I would've started that part of my education a little sooner. Now we got one from Aloy Anderson Photography, who is the one, the only, Ray Christopher here on YouTube. And he says, hey, OC, my question is, do you get fired up about these modern digital cameras that have come out recently? I don't get all that worked up over these, mostly because I know I can't afford them. Now, having said that, if you're watching this, Fuji, Sony, Canon, and you want to send me your latest models, you can DM me on Instagram at the old camera guy. Okay, David Wewell says, that's a great shirt. Where did you get it? He's talking about this shirt that I wore for my Instagram post asking for questions. And shameless plug, I designed this for Teespring, and you can find this shirt and a bunch of my other designs in the link in the description. All right, we got a six-parter from Yong Wing Yi, who is Bean Kurt here on YouTube, and they ask, what is your favorite film? Well, if I'm buying it, it would be Eastman Kodak XX or 5222. Beautiful film, movie film, love it. All right, favorite camera. I'm going to go with an underdog. I love the Canon EOS Rebel series. Here lately, my Rebel T2 has been acting up, so I'd probably go with my Rebel TI. You pair that with a 40mm f2.8 pancake lens, it's super lightweight and a great walk-around camera. Favorite developer? For black and white, it's HC110. It's got a great shelf life. You can find developing times for just about every kind of film. And the new formulation, which is thinner, is a little bit easier to deal with and mix than the old Serp. Now for color, I really like Sinisto CS41 Liquid Court Kit. Favorite place to shoot? That would be the south side of Columbus. It's got an old water tower and some great old train tracks with a lot of character. And just about every time I get a new film or a new camera, I go down there to test it. Favorite photographer? That can change depending on my mood. Today, I'm going to go with Saul Leiter. Tomorrow, it might be William Eccleston, might be Vivian Meyer, it might be Gordon Parks. Those are some that are all worth checking out. And the last part of the question, favorite alternative chem recipe? Well, I've done bleach bypass, I've done cross-processing, but my true love is film soup. I've done tea, I've done actual soup, but my favorite has been red wine. Now, I haven't messed around with caffeinol yet, so that's one I still need to try. All right, can you believe it? We're actually at the last question, and this one comes from none other than Jess Hobbs. Jess is a Montreal-based photographer here on YouTube, and I mentioned one of her Polaroid videos on this channel before. So Jess asks, what or who inspired you to start a YouTube channel? And how did you feel when you released your first video? 
I was going through some of my old negatives and scans and I thought I really should do something with all these pictures. And I thought maybe I can put together a slideshow and upload it somewhere. I never thought about appearing on camera, but then my son, who was 14 at the time, started his own YouTube channel called J-Man Vlogs. And that got me planning something a little more ambitious, so I started writing the script for what would become the very first Old Camera Guy video, my review on the Minolta AFC. And here we are, 100 videos later. Now, as far as how I felt after I released that first video, I definitely felt a sense of accomplishment in just putting the video together in the first place, getting it out there. But you kind of just release it into a big void. Nobody really knows you're there, unless you're a celebrity or have a big following on another platform. But when it really got cool was when I started to see the comments rolling in and I got to interact with people and that's still the best part for me over two years later. Now at the time I'm posting this video, I don't have 100,000 or even 10,000 subscribers. But what I do have is a fantastic network of supporters who are incredibly active and engaged and a community I am truly grateful for. Thanks for all your support. I look forward to seeing you again next Sunday and every Sunday at 11 a.m. with another new video. So until next time, do some good, have some fun, and shoot some film.